one thing I noticed during the test drive is that it was scraping a little bit. And I feel like the primary reason is because of this core support. So I wanted to make it low enough so that it could fit and tuck in the radiator condenser and fan, but I made it a little bit too low. Right now, it's almost the lowest point of the car. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it back out, remove the radiator and fan from there, and shorten the core support. Now, looking from this angle, you may notice that I don't have a lot of room to work with. I'll bring you in a little bit closer. So that's the top of the radiator. If I go up anymore, I'm gonna be hitting this, uh, this header panel. Now, I don't want that. I actually want the radiator to sit back more. So I'm gonna to have to use those, uh, those L-shaped brackets that I have down there and route it back. Also, by moving, well, I'll get into more details a little bit later, but I have a plan in mind. I'm gonna take a few measurements and get this out of here. So you saw the before and here is the after. I shaved two inches of the vertical support off. So this, this structure pipe that goes down and holds the radiator and fan, cut two inches off of that, brought it up. So now it is not the lowest point of the car. I have the radiator slightly above this header panel, which appears just about stock based off of the pictures that I could see. And there's a, uh, there's a cover piece that goes over all of this and clamps it together. So I'm not concerned that it sits too high. We'll let the hood tell the tale and, you know, <laughs> decide from there, but it, it looks like it's going to work for me. So next steps. There's supposed to be a, a support bracket that goes from here to this frame horn. And I'll just weld that back in now that we have the correct length. Do the same thing on the other side and I can paint this. So you see that there are cap, you know, there's, uh, there's open holes here. I have to cap those on both sides. So I'll weld those up. I'll get everything nice and painted and rust protected. And we're one step closer. With all that done, now we can put the hood on, we can have that support coming over here, we can fit the latch, all of it's going to come together and the core support was holding me up. So, so excited to get that on. I'm also making progress on the hood, check it out. So what you're seeing here is a mock-up of the hood latch. What I need to do, I need to get it two and a half inches in, two and a quarter inches deep, and have enough wiggle room with these bolts to move it either direction. Now I'm gonna have cross, a crossbar that comes from all the way across. So I have some wiggle room in these actual bolt holes as well. But I know I need to cut this off because it's just a little bit too close to that radiator. So I'll get that sliced off. I'll move this just a smidge in so I can get those uh, two and a half and two and a quarter numbers dialed in. And then I'll have everything I need to burn in this cross brace and make sure that this is gonna lock up perfectly with the hood. Grinder and paint. We'll make a welder with a yank. All right, so fast forward and the hood is on. Let me show you what I got going on here. Nearly done with final welding. 
and I cut out this little access panel so I can insert bolts here and tie in this latch. The, the cable and all that still works well. The hood is as adjusted as can be. The major problem that I'm running into is when the hood comes down, it's not reaching this point to click in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld back this, uh, this back in there, take the bolts out, weld it back in, and I'll have an extension piece come up here, and then that'll, that'll give me some extra room toward the hood that I can bolt this up to. I can't tell by looking in the grill how close I am, but I don't even feel resistance. And I would feel all of this if I were that close. So that tells me that I need to go at least half an inch because if it doesn't start clicking in here, it's not gonna get to the point where it actually latches. So once that's figured out, then I can take care of a perch for this spring and a, a mechanism that this can hook on. But all that's come. All right, so here it is. All black, painted, and perfect. I have my latch in here. I had to weld back that support back into it and then elevate it with some stanchions. So that way we can get the reach we needed for the hood latch to latch on. But it's dead center and the hook works and the perch works on the back as well. I'd like to extend something maybe build something right over here for the for the spring but more on that to come but we're finally able to latch it on and all works perfectly well So if you own a Turbo Buick and your inspection cover looks like this, you need to do something different. So I am going to research options. I know there's a cheap option, like 40 bucks to get a replacement one. There's Spool Fool. And I think there's another couple of other options, especially if you're leaking oil. So look into that. I'll be looking into it too. Drop in the comments if you have any suggestions for me. But I need to get this out of the way so I could take a look at the starter and take a look at another coolant leak. So hopefully I can figure out what's going on there because it's a little scary. Okay, that's a 15, but... <sighs> this is the easy one. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't even see it. Uh,
So I've been having an issue with my starter where this spline is supposed to come out when you hit the starter button and it only partially comes out majority of the time. So it will take me two to three cranks to get it to start up. So I wanted to get this out and get it replaced. So out with the old and in with the new, but even more of an issue. We have something going on with the Grand National. Let me show you what's going on underneath here. So I've been losing coolant right around this area and I thought that is the freeze plug. Let me back up so you can see where it is. So this is right above the starter and you're seeing the freeze plug on the block. The headers are just above it. And you know, that's the Y pipe crossover connection. So I was having a leak right around here and I figured that that freeze plug was bad. So I was getting ready to replace it. But if you look right underneath there, that is a crack going all the way from one freeze plug past another. And it's serious enough to leak to the point where I can only get five PSI before it, uh, it starts to spew coolant. So needless to say, we have found the reason why the Grand National was parked outside for, for so long. They likely saw this, found it, and just put it out to pasture. And we can get it back on the road, but we have a few options here. We can try to fix it, swap the block with another one, or swap engines to something a little bit more um a little bit more known for making power so there's a few options there and as much as i wanted to fight to keep this thing hot air for as long as i have this may be the nail in the coffin so it's going to cost me about five dollars to try it but if i can apply uh apply some epoxy there to stop that leak I could get away with it. I think I can anyway, but this crack is long. We're looking at, I don't know, maybe four, four inches long. And it starts to spew at five PSI. So it may be a long shot. And yes, it is a long shot, but what I'm looking to do is to get the car out on the road, enjoy how it drives for a little bit during the summer and fall and use the winter time to rebuild it and make it better than ever. So it's not a, it's not a final solution at all, but just to get it out and enjoy it for now and plan my winter accordingly. So still decision needs to be made on what goes in it, but we're sticking with hot air for now. So got a few other goodies in the next episode. But if you're looking to do something like this, you gotta grind the area down well. I used a belt sander and removed all of the rust scale and build up around the area. And I used the original, um, the original JB Weld because it has the greatest sticking properties to metal. So let me know if you've ever done something like that before and how it worked out for you. Interested to read your comments. Thank you for watching. Got a little bit more on the fuel pressure regulator right now all right so i got the buick back in here and i am taking a look at the fuel pressure regulator as i mentioned earlier that one is stock and running about 35 psi so i've got this brand new one g body auto parts adjustable and i'll get it up to 45 psi that's what the extreme g chip calls for so 